What do we got here? Epiphany Unity. Great, let's do it. All right, friends, welcome back. This is a podcast of the season called New Beginnings in the Project I refer to as no other life. It's a a philosophy, a paradigm that I developed over the last number of months. Some elements have been kind of percolating for a number of years, and I just finally am getting around to doing something about it. So I'm glad that you're sharing this journey with me. As I talk to you about new beginnings, the realization or the reality of it is that this itself is a journey. So we're breaking apart the eight different models into four groups of two. And the couple that we're talking about today is somewhat uh, cause and effect. One comes from the other, or one leads into the other. But that effect, the second one, actually can follow a number of the other seven. So keep that in mind as we go through. And when I might first say to you, what do you think of when you hear of a new beginning? I wonder whether you would think vision quest, path to self-discovery, that self-actualization sort of a thing. If so, then you are going to fully understand this particular model. And I'm calling it the epiphany model. There are a variety of synonyms that I could have used. In the epiphany model, as complex as it may seem, as, as many differentiators as there might appear to be, the truth of the matter is, In the epiphany model, the person who is having the epiphany realizes that what they're doing is not fulfilling anymore. Maybe it never was. We don't need to dig into that because, say it with me, the past is in the past, the future is the future, and all we have is now. And as hard as it is to believe that, as hard as it is to trust it, we all know it's true. It's just as bad to live in the future as it is to live in the past. The now is what we have. And so the person who has the epiphany realizes that they are unfulfilled in the now. And this will be different than the pragmatic model, if you haven't learned about that much yet. In the pragmatic model, you realize that all of the resources that you are putting toward an expressed goal aren't going to get you to that goal as rapidly or maybe ever. And so you have a moment, a momentary realization. The epiphany, on the other hand, is the reality check that says it's not fulfilling. So maybe you're doing exactly what you wanted to start out doing. Maybe you're really good at it. Maybe the people around you are, you know, forever complimenting you and saying, wow, we've never seen anyone do it as good as you. But you aren't fulfilled. You might be doing it for someone else. You might be doing it because... It's who you are, it's your culture, it's your legacy, your history. Someone else just might have these ideas for you, or maybe they're what you set out to do, but now you're unfulfilled. So what do you do? Well, as I said on another model, if we could divorce ourselves from the emotional baggage, the impact to our feelings, yada, yada. In this particular case, I'm going to say, if we were living in a void with no one whom we hold dear, and just like I said about that other statement, a whisper, 
We can't. There's nobody in the world who doesn't have someone they hold dear or that they are held dear by someone else. It just doesn't happen. The loneliest person in the world, the person who is the farthest from everyone else, is missed or misses someone or something. We're not robots. And so if you were to do that, if you could live a life like that, then it's easy. Something happened in the past. I don't care what it is because of the now. Now you're unfulfilled, so you change and you go off and do something else. But the key, the crux to this epiphany model is so important. We don't live in a world where we are without those whom we hold dear. So I realize I'm unfulfilled. I realize I need, I have to try, I need to experience, I want to, tr to get a taste of X, Y, Z. But there are people around me. There are those whom I hold dear. And some of them are going to feel one way, and some of them are going to feel another way, friends. And we reach a point where you need to talk to some people, because we're not all alone on a desert island, none of us. There's not good internet there. And you need to tell, hey, we have to talk. You've seen that movie scene so many times. We have to talk. And that person can feel a few different ways. I'm with you or I'm against you. Now, this is a relationship test. You know, there's probably more than a single person whom you hold dear that you want to tell and need to tell. But chances are, in that melange of numbers of people that you need to tell, that do matter to you, there's probably one stakeholder that really, really matters to you. And you might be living with a whole family, kids, grandparents, all that jazz, but there's probably one that if you get them in the toehold here, they will bring the others to that understanding. Let's be frank. So if that person comes to you and says, I, I'm not with you, I'm against you, then I can't really address that right now. That's the sort of thing that um, exceeds my education. I can't give advice on that. And frankly, every story is going to be different. So this is not the forum. You would want to uh, find out the best way to handle that through someone you actually know and can talk to. But you're not really out of the woods if you hear the phrase, I am for you. And this is where it gets tough, because I am for you can result in two very different results. There's, I am for you, and you are worth more than everything I have going on right now. Let's do it. I will see you to the end of the earth. And... There's also, I am with you, but I can't do it. For whatever reason, the relationship might not be ready for this plunge. Maybe I am working on all of my other goals. I'm involved in a prerequisite model. I'm in a startup model. I, I have things going on. So I'm for you but I'm not with you. And in all good hope, this is one of those I hope you'll dance situations where you love someone so much that 
you want them to be happy. If they need this, you want them to have this. And you'll figure your stuff out. Those both exist, and they both come from the same place. I am for you. But am I with you, or am I not able to be with you? And everything I just described of the person who's receiving the news is what I refer to as the unity model, because this is unity tested. This is what we're talking about when we are at the altar, and what do we say? For richer, poorer, sickness, health. My God! In the past year alone, I have seen every single one of those in my life, not even the ones whom I hold dear. What do you do? You aren't thinking that way when you walk proudly up to the altar in your fancy suit. We don't know what we're talking about when we say at age 20, oh, for richer or poor, better and worse, hey, you know, hey, richer, poor, sickness, health. We don't know what we're talking about. But when unity is tested, we find out pretty quick. And I think every one of you knows an example of unity tested. Someone whose sickness and health are at odds with what they thought going in. The richer, the poorer, the better, the worse. You know someone. Now, this unity model can appear as a result of a variety of things. It's not just that someone has an epiphany and says, hey, will you go become a missionary with me? Hey, will you go to the ends of the earth with me? I want to get that doctoral degree, and it is a thousand miles away. Unity can be tested when someone goes into a startup model. That's going to take an awful lot of their lives, and everyone knows it. Um, when we're going through any one of these where we're infusing something with personal resources, time, talent, and treasure, at the expense of being with that person who is part of our unity, it's, it's all there. And you, right now, can think of people whom you hold dear who have been in these exact situations. Now, elsewhere in the study materials of this No Other Life season of New Beginnings, you will see activities in which you will be able to, you know, you'll be guided through thinking about the different models that you are going through, the different models being experienced by those you hold dear. And most important, the whole the whole reason for any of this is to learn to treat people better. When you have heard all eight of these models, when you have heard four podcasts in a row all talking about pairs of new beginning models, you pretty quickly realize that they are different. There is not a one-size-fits-all new beginning. And what are we talking about when we say new beginning anyway? It's change. Now, if we were to just say, oh, uh, that person's changing, whatever. We haven't tried to learn anything. We haven't tried to get better. We haven't become better. We haven't learned to come alive. So I hope that you'll do these exercises. I hope you'll do the thinking, the meditations, the reflecting. Answer those silly questions. The silly questions are the ones that you learn the most from, without question in my experience. And I hope that we'll all learn to treat each other better, to support each other better, because 
Every one of the eight needs something different and is able to give something different. Friends, I am at Rick C. Home on many major platforms. There are some where I'm fairly active and some where I can't figure out what is even going on there, but I sure do have my username. On the ones that I'm actually doing something on, join me, converse with me. Let's have some fun. You know, I'm just one little guy here trying to do his best, working a full-time job and dealing with a lot of stuff in my life. But somehow I'm finding a way to accomplish this here this season because you're that important to me. Take care of yourselves. We all have no other life. <laughs>